So it's deployed the same way as a standard GA tag, um, and it can coexist quite happily. Um, one of the main disadvantages, because it uses a third party cookie, as opposed to first party for uh, the other two versions, uh, cookie permissions are generally a lot less, uh, a lot more harsh towards third party ones. So you may find uh, some variants, quite strong variants in places, uh, in visitor numbers, and particularly in repeat visitor data. Um, so it's what I, I would always recommend in addition to your standard as opposed to one and say. Um, other than that, to be honest, it's exactly the same as other GA, um, but you get demographics data. So this is the same stuff that Google is using uh, for AdSense and so on, um, and it's based upon that. And obviously it throws it in as a standard dimension, so you can start splitting all of your conversions this way. Um, uh, yeah, your conversions and all of your behaviour by age or indeed by interest. <laughs> So I, I was a little sceptical when we first deployed it about what sort of quality this data was, uh, so we ran a really quick and dirty poll uh, internally, seeing what people got on their Google Analytics, uh, their Google profile, what Google thinks they're about. Um, yeah, this completely unscientific method suggests uh, it's actually pretty reasonable, except when it does go wrong, it tends to go terribly wrong. People tend to be 50 years out, the wrong gender, and live in Scotland or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's worth considering. It's a very easy deployment if you can get it in there. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I, I'm not even using Google Analytics currently, oh, okay. so I'm not a tourist specialist. But um, how does that relate to data protection? Because you said that it's it's um, well, in part, this is supposed to be opt-in. One, it's got the standard sort of Google protection of it's not personally identifiable, and well, it shouldn't be, and you should be going out of your way to ensure that it isn't. Um, so this is all aggregate data that Google have assembled. So it shouldn't be tied to an individual. Okay. Um, and they get and there's a cookie thing at the top as well yeah. that says you're being tracked. Yeah, and this should be for people that have got pretty, uh, pretty lapped permissions almost, uh, or otherwise it won't be recording. So it just drops out all the ones that know. Yeah, like. but we definitely did update our privacy policy when we put this in, just to make sure that that was very clear, and just to highlight the sort of Google opt-out methods. They make it very easy. Um, so we thought for safety, uh, we will include that as well. Okay. Um, so reporting, just this is kind of the dullest part of the, uh, our work when we have to use GA, and it's also one of the ones that can take up the most time. So just a couple of quick bits on how to use it. If you possibly can, just put everything in the automated scheduled list. Um, it doesn't matter how complicated your uh, report is or your dashboard, it can all be uh, emailed out. Um, so some of the stuff we use it for, uh, we run a regular report on uh, pages that have thrown, the pages before a 404 error, um, which goes out regularly to our team just to make sure that they can start hunting those broken links and chasing down what's wrong. Um, yeah, if you haven't got one of those, I'd recommend setting that up. It saves a lot of hassle down the line. Um, campaign reports. So if you've got a small email campaign going out, um, it's not a long-term thing. Again, we jump in, uh, pick out that report, and then automate it out. And then if it's a slightly bigger event, um, we use one of the GA dashboards uh, and then automate the, the sending of that. So the, the small dashboards, um, Essentially, if you want more than one metric in there, that's what you should be using. Um, so you can include just sort of traffic stats, your referrals, and your conversion behavior in one generally easy, uh, easy to understand PDF. Um, and then make sure that the relevant people are getting that one. Um, one of the things we're using at the moment, I know this is about GA, but um, we've recently moved uh, pretty wholesale into using Tableau. And this crops up here because now Tableau finally supports uh, the GA API. So you can pull data straight into Tableau. Um, if one of the main reasons we found this useful is there's always um, a tension, to be honest, uh, between making a report that has a broad appeal, make sure you've got the audience 
possible. Most people are getting it. Um, but there's always a tension with that against uh, making it specific enough that people can act on it. Um, and we found that Tableau is helping us to bridge that gap. Because we can send out a very detailed report that carries an awful lot of data. Uh, and then the users themselves can play around with the filters. So they can just look at their team's results. Or they can change the context to what's most important to them if they want a specific date period. So that kind of lets us hit both bits at once. We can keep it very broad, it's applicable to everyone. But you can drill right down to get to the actionable level. Um, so I'd highly recommend having a go on that free, on free trial for that. Um, and it's not too expensive on licenses.